the numbers go completely off the charts. The Census Bureau tells us that this will be our future if immigration continues at today's rates. And this is what we're bequeathing to our children and our grandchildren by the middle of the next century. This is not conjecture, this is not subjective, this is not what might be, this is what will be if Congress refuses to lower immigration to something like a traditional level. There are some Americans who have very sincere feelings that we have to bring in immigrants in order to show our concern for the third world. Is immigration an effective tool? In this illustration, I use this gumball is representing about one million people. Now, one million people is about what we take in a year in, in immigrants. This is not a small number because remember, this one gumball worth of, of, of immigration is driving every bit of this red. And each year, in our magnanimity, we try to rescue about this number from third world poverty. But how many people in the world are equally deserving of this kind of humanitarian concern on our part. Well, you've got to have some kind of benchmark, and I use Mexico. 25% of the immigrants in the 1980s came from Mexico. Depending on the value of the peso at the time, the average Mexican makes about one-tenth the amount of money that the average American makes. That's poor. I would say that's deserving of our compassion. But how many people in the world are more impoverished than the average Mexican? And the answer is, 4,600 million people. 4.6 billion people in the world are more impoverished than the average Mexican. If immigration is a policy to help the people of the third world, I want you to watch very closely. Don't miss this. Because I want you to watch to see how much the third world changes each year when we take the million people out of it. You see... There can never be any hope for the people in the third world except here where they live. Most of these people, 99 point whatever percent of these people can never leave. They're stuck where they are. They have to bloom where they're planted. If we care about these people, we have to figure out ways to help them here. Because we can do this kind of thing forever, but we won't make any difference in the world. There are many ways that Americans can help third world nations, but immigration is not one of them. And let's look at another issue here. It's that, that is the issue of the safety valve. Since the 1950s, people have been talking about how the United States has to take the overpopulation of the Latin American countries, lest those countries blow up. Can that work? Well, no, it can't. Let me show you why. The fact is, is that last year, we took about a million people. But last year, the third world added births over deaths another 80 million people into the impoverished persons of the world. And this year, we'll take a million people. And this year, the third will add more than 80 million more people. And next year, if the U.S. government insists on bringing this exorbitant, non-traditional level of immigration and brings another one million people, these people will still add another more than 80 million people into the impoverished numbers of the world. There's no way that we can ever get ahead of this. We cannot be a safety valve. We could take millions a year, totally destroy the social fabric of this country, totally destroy the environmental resources, ruin any possibility of the lower skilled people in this country having any kind of a decent standard of living, we still would not get ahead of this. If at this level of population, 40% of the lakes and streams in this country still are not fishable and swimmable, what are we going to do here, there, all the way up there? If Americans are beginning to fight over the opportunity to be in parks, on beaches, the national parks are being loved to death at this population in the country. What happens up here? If we are not keeping up with the education of our urban school children at this level, if we cannot build schools fast enough now, if so many Americans are feeling that the congestion 
and the, so the tearing of the social fabric is, is moving beyond acceptability at this level, what is our hope moving on up? Now, you may live in a community that's little affected by immigration, but believe me, if this growth happens, there isn't a community in America that is assured of escaping the ravages that's now hitting California. And we must make decisions now for our children's and our grandchildren's future. If we allow this to happen, that future will be foreclosed. Now, what can we do? It's very simple. Congress merely has to lower the number back to where it was in 1965.